Hello and welcome to our broadcast of Beyond the Shackles. My name is Chaplain Yvonka Farabee, if you have not joined us before. But if you have joined us before, you know that Beyond the Shackles focuses on all things dealing with the incarcerated, disenfranchised, and their families. But we do not stop there. Because what we know is that you don't have to spend one day behind physical bars to be in shackles in your heart and your mind. But what we believe here at the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, as well as on Beyond the Shackles, is that by the blood of Jesus, all can be set free. And that brings us to our message for today. This is a very empowering message, and it is one that is meant to encourage you. Because there's so much that God has for us and we go through so much in life. And what I want to convey to you is that it's not uh, for, it's just not for any reason. It's all going to be made uh, for your greater good. The title of our show today is called It's Our Inheritance. And what is the significance of understanding our inheritance? The, The reason that this even came to mind I was having a conversation with someone who was in the body of Christ. They were a fellow believer, but they didn't believe that we were the seed of Abraham and had rights to the blessings of Abraham. And I was trying to explain to this individual that we do based upon the word of God because of what Jesus Christ did. And so what I had to do is go to the scripture. And then in my meditating on what I wanted to discuss, I wanted to make sure that everybody that's listening, everybody under the sound of my voice, understand that you are indeed in line uh, for the inheritance of Abraham because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And the scripture that I want to open up with is Ephesians uh, 2, 11 through 20. I'm going to read it. Uh, so if you can bear with me, I will do that. Uh, And it says in verse 11, it says, therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the, the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But that's the way it used to be. Verse 13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once, once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier. Listen to what this is saying. The dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law within its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in him one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, amen, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the spotless and prophet, of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So as you know from Ephesians 2, 11 through 20 that I just read, that we are no longer um, separate. The barrier was broken down and we were grafted into the promises uh, as one people. And why is this even important? Why is it under important to understand uh, spiritual heritage? And there are a variety of reasons that we're going to cover in this short time uh, that we have today. Uh, but the first thing I want to make sure that we understand that we have a, a, a full scriptural view of what blessings are, because it's very limited to have a one dimensional view about blessings, to think about uh, the money, to think about um, certain types of prosperity, the houses, and that's all great. 
and in it's of God, but you want to keep things in appropriate context because there are so many other ways uh, that we're blessed. And I think we went through a period of time, uh, particularly if I can remember, uh, for those of you um, who uh, came up in the body of Christ around the time of the late 80s and uh, in, in early 90s, there was a lot of, of what they call the prosperity gospel, the name it and claim it, the grab it and blab it, if you will. But here's the thing. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater because it is true that when you just teach a prosperity message without the balance of the totality, what blessing really means in the body of Christ and what it means scripturally is empty. If you're only talking about the stuff for my four and no more, if you're only talking about it uh, in a context where you're just going to live your best life and don't get me wrong. I believe it is of God that we enjoy all the things that we get, but we have to understand uh, what blessing is because I'm going to tell you something. Me, myself, I let the unfairness of life debilitate me for far too long. And it debilitated me because I didn't understand what God was doing when he was allowing things to come into my life. And when I learned by the word of God that nothing happens except by his allowance, that really frustrated me because I was like, why? Why am I going through so much? Why do I suffer so much loss? Why I've suffered so much heartbreak? And the bottom line is there's things that he's doing so that we can indeed be blessed uh, in totality, in a variety of levels, and not just for ourselves, but for us to fulfill purpose and for us to have a great influence and to be able to give the guidance to those that are in our sphere of influence. Amen. So let's talk about what the blessings are in terms of the blessings of Abraham and why uh, I'm going to read this uh, from um, the, the NIV. And particularly the scripture that I'm going to read is um, Genesis 17, and I'm going to read one through eight. And what are the blessings of Abraham that we're talking about? And this is not all of them. They have, um, other blessings, um, that are mentioned as well, but we're going to start here. It says when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God almighty walk before me and be blameless. And I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram, fell face down and God said to, to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. He's name, naming blessings now. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. God often changes. You'll see in, in, in biblical account, he changes the name of the person to correspond with where they're going, their destiny and where they're going. So uh, he's going to call him Abraham for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you, the whole land of Canaan, where you are now an alien, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. That is awesome. And it's a lot. <laughs> and you, it, 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 it makes sense that. The, and when you see in First Chronicles, there's all this chronicalizing of who begot who. And you wonder, why is that so important? Because back in a time, you had to be able to prove your lineage uh, in, in, a, in a particular place in time. And your name had to be found in that in order for you to have the rights, the birth rights to what was coming to you. And uh, as you can see, that was a whole lot of promise. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we no longer have to prove our lineage. Amen. We are automatically in line with what uh, the promises are that are outlined. Now, the question is, why do we even need uh, to do that? Why do we need to be a great nation? Why um, is it important for us to be kings in the earth uh, and everything that it mentioned? So when we look at this, Amen. It's important for us 
to one, say yes to God, just like Abraham did, and to be blameless and to go forth and, and the things of God the way we need to. Because when we don't move forward with our purpose, with an understanding of who we are as a seed of Abraham, we don't understand one, whose we are, and we don't understand uh, what we have coming to us and why, and why it's important for us to be in a position. And when Abraham said yes, Abraham is, is the bloodline, the very bloodline that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. If you could imagine if he didn't display the courage that was necessary for him to step out uh, and, and, and move along along a continuum of purpose and, and stay the same and be better off with the devil that he knew, where would we be? But because he was obedient and he stepped out on faith and did what it is that God asked him to do, Jesus Christ was of that lineage. And because Jesus Christ was of that lineage and as he was born, we have a way back to the Father. And not only do we have a way back to the Father, we have a blueprint for how we are to live our life from the womb to the tomb, just because of the way Jesus, um, just because a, a way was made for Jesus to be born uh, out of obedience. Amen. And I couldn't imagine where we, we'd be um, if that didn't happen. We'd be sunk. We'd be done for. So it's important for us to understand and follow the example of our um, ancestors, our spiritual ancestors. But also we're to learn uh, from the mistakes of our ancestors, to learn from all those hard-headed, stiff-necked Israelites <laughs> who God rescued them time and time and time again. And he does the same with us. But what would happen? They would come into a place of comfort and prosperity, and then they would go all off and, and, and worship their false gods and do all the things that they would do that was not of God. And, and then judgment would come, and then they would cor make correction, and, and they would say they were sorry. And, and then they do it over and over again. It's important that we understand that uh, the mistakes and learn from the mistakes that, that they made so that we don't repeat them in our life now. And we can learn from those mistakes. Although there are some things, unfortunately, that we have to go through ourselves. There are some things we're not going to be able to learn from Abraham. We're not going to be able to learn from somebody else and looking to the left or the right. We have to bump our own heads sometimes so that we can get the lesson and we can grow. And, and that's in our, in our disobedience. But sometimes things happen to us and we haven't done anything wrong. But God has allowed it because he wants to strengthen us and he wants to build our resilience because it takes resilience to be able to achieve purpose and to be able to navigate the terrain of the responsibility of the blessings that he's talking about. He's even talking about in Genesis how he's going to make um, our name great. Why do we need to have a great name? Why do we need all these things? And we do. Uh, but the thing is, we have to be able to govern ourselves responsibly. And that happens through trial and tribulation many times. And, 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 and hopefully there are things that we can learn uh, from our um, spiritual um, ancestors so that we can make correction in our own lives. Also, it's important for us to understand because the hopes and dreams that are manifestations of what's been established in our heart is from God. And the achievement of purpose is, is, is the birth of those hopes and dreams. And what God has placed inside of you, you have the ability to save a people. You want to say yes to God. You want to be able to come in line and do what it is that God is asking you to do. Because I mentioned in, a, in, a, in another broadcast one time, I think many times about Billy Graham, and I don't know his story in terms of who led him to Christ, but that, that person and their obedience, look at the fruit that came from Billy Graham's ministry. And there are many people that are like that in this earth realm right now that are serving the Lord at such a high capacity and they have such a high reach. And I think about um, all of the crusades that somebody like Pastor Greg Laurie has had and, and, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people being led to Christ because somebody took the time to minister the love of Christ to him. Somebody said yes, and they had an understanding. So I want to encourage you today that it's important that we understand that there are great things that are birthed from us that God has put in our heart that we can birth and we can't take it for granted. We can't take for granted um, and, and understand who we are and that we are to be kings and we are, our name is to be made great for the purposes of preparing the earth for Christ's return and letting your light shine so that people might know him. Amen. 
uh, many times we have a worldly view of blessing. And so the, the view is, would be an example of something like this. So if you get a college scholarship, you're blessed. You get an unexpected raise, blessed. Wonderful family, blessed. And all of that's true. It's all a blessing. But what if things aren't going your way? What if you don't have a great marriage or marriage is, is in a bad way? What if your finances are such that, you know, you're just at your wit's end trying to figure out how to rob Peter to pay Paul? What if these things are going on? What happens when life comes at you with both barrels? Adversity builds resilience and humility. I know many times in my life when I think about the things that happened to me and the losses that I suffered, it's because I didn't understand that I wasn't humble. There were some areas in my life that I thought, oh, I, I'm going to humble myself. But the truth be told, I thought I was finished. <laughs> I couldn't see myself. So God had to allow some things to transpire so that in the end, I can humble myself because God can't use us in, in pride and self-sufficiency. He need us to rely on him so that he can show us which way to go and what we need to do for the greater good. And we'll be blessed in the process. It's a blessing when you can tell someone that, you know, how to be healed and how to walk in healing and how to have faith once they've been sick. It is a blessing to be able to tell how, that someone how to come back from financial ruin if they've lost everything because they come from an experience and they're able to tell them, tell you how God brought them out and how they can tell you how that scripture worked for them, but they put feet to those dreams and those hopes uh, so that they can come out of adversity. These are traits that we need as believers and we don't have a full scope um, of blessing if we're only looking at money, if we're only looking at a jet. We don't know uh, what it is that God wants to do when he gives someone in the body of Christ a jet uh, and, and he wants them uh, to be available uh, to do the work of the ministry to, to a level um, that is high. And I'm not talking about just having things just to have them, you know, just for your own enjoyment. You will enjoy things and there's nothing wrong with that but always keep the bigger picture in mind so that you keep the main thing, the main thing. Amen. In uh, one of the versions of the Bible, there are 112 references uh, with the word bless or blessing or blessed. And none of them have anything to do with material prosperity. Not one of them. And I find that very interesting. You have scriptures that says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are you when others revile you or persecute you. How about that? That's Matthew 5, 3 and 4, and then 10 through 11. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. <laughs> That's James 1 and 12. There is no material prosperity or even a, a hint of it uh, that's mentioned in any of the scriptures that I just read. So what are the blessings then? Blessing is anything that God gives that makes us fully satisfied in Him. If you are living a life of, like I mentioned, self-sufficiency, if you don't really need Christ, God will eventually make a way so that you will need him. So that you, not, not for his own self, it's for our own greater good. We need to have a savior in our life. And if you are a believer and you're kind of going along your own way, life has a way of happening so that you understand that it's not just all about you. And it's important because you have other people in your life that need to hear about the goodness of God. And it is because he rescues us from ourselves that we're able to say so. It's because he rescues us from situations and circumstances that we're able to say so. I know uh, as, as much as it was not a pleasant thing when I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, 
I could have looked at that situation and said, you know, woe is me. I'm diagnosed with this thing. But the first thing is God gave me a peace because I knew that it was not a sickness that was unto death. But then I was able to look at that and do everything. I followed the physician's instructions. I did everything. I did the whole thing. I did, I did chemo. I did radiation. And I didn't allow uh, anybody to interfere with that process. But the reason that I believe that I had such a peace is because I sought the Lord in times of peace. <laughs> I sought the Lord when times were good. I had been already been down a roller coaster where I had lost so many things in my life. So God had me in a place where he had my attention and he's had my attention for many years. And I've enjoyed a rich relationship with the Lord and it's always forever growing. But then this thing happened. But when it happened, I understood, okay, God, why are you allowing this? This didn't happen because you allow it. But then I got, I was thankful because the way I found it, I found it at the, the first stage. It didn't have to be so. Even when I went to the physician's office, they wanted to know how and on earth did I find this because they assumed it was on mammogram. It was not. It was because I was directed by the Holy Spirit to a spot. And when I went directly to it by his instruction, when I woke up one morning, I, I felt the lump. And then when I felt the lump, immediately I knew that it was not good. I knew that it was cancer in my spirit. But then the peace of God swept in on me and I needed that peace because things didn't go as fast as I would like them to go. Things didn't go in the direction that I would have liked them in the time period in which I would have preferred. But every single thing, all the way down to the doctors, all the way down uh, to, to my needs being met, I didn't know how my finances were going to be cared for. He took care of every single thing so that now I can, I can see the blessing in that whole process and what he was doing in me and what he was, and he was exercising the measure of faith that he gave me so that I can stand in agreement with somebody else that's sick in their body. That is a blessing. It's a blessing when you can be able to do that. If I only look at the things that I receive according to the way the world sees things, then I won't get what God is doing in terms of the greater purpose. I, I remember uh, the uh, pastor Tony Evans, a son, and I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now, but he ministered such a powerful eulogy uh, at his mother, First Lady Lois, when she passed away from cancer. And he talked about in a paraphrase of how his mother won. Even she won if she had, had been alive and, and she won in death because she knew Christ. And I know they did not want to lose uh, their mother and the church didn't want to lose their First Lady and Pastor Tony Evans didn't want to lose his wife, but they were powerful and resolute in the fact that when you are in Christ Jesus, you win no matter what. And when you have an understanding of that, you don't have to hesitate on living your life according to the way God would have you live it and achieving your hopes and dreams, not just for the sake of achieving them. There are people who need what you have, what God has put inside of you. They are waiting uh, for you because they're waiting for something. They, 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 they need a solution that you have in your belly and they don't know Christ necessarily the way you do. And you are able to let your light shine so that people might know him. Amen. It's not a small thing. And it is a blessing when you go through trial and tribulation and God brings you out because everything that you've gone through, God will turn it around for your greater good. Everything the enemy thought that he stole from you, you know that he will, God will turn it around for not only your good, but a good of mankind that is around you. Amen. And I want to encourage you uh, to that uh, for, uh, in that today so that you have a perspective and know that everything in totality um, that you go through uh, has the potential to be the blessing um, of God if you allow it to do what it is meant to do in your life. And I'm not saying that everything is going to be easy, but everything is not going to be cookies and ice cream and cake and lollipops. Some things are going to be tough, but know that no matter what they are, God will bring you out. He will raise you up and he will raise you up and he will make your name 
great. And he's going to make your name great, not just for the sake of you having a great name. It's because you need to be a king and a queen. You need to have a great name because people listen to people with great names. People listen to prosperous people. They listen to people with money. So it's okay if you have money, but just keep everything in its appropriate perspective so that you know what a blessing really is. And everything that God promises in Abraham, if you are in Christ Jesus, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that all of those blessings belong to you. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus, Jesus Christ. If there's somebody that's listening under the sound of my voice and you're like, wow, I didn't know um, the, the, I don't know quite uh, if I'm saved. I don't know quite if I am the seed of Abraham. I don't know uh, if, if, if I have, um, I'm in line with, with what it is that uh, it is to be saved, uh, uh, so to speak. When we say that it's according to the mouth confession of Romans 10, 9, and 10. And I just want to pray with you right now that if you don't know the Lord, or if even you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, if you repeat after me, we can make it happen today. Uh, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you uh, for your word. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you that I believe he died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day so that I would have everlasting life and dominion in this earth. And I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I renounce my past life of sin. And I look forward to my new life in Christ and to understanding uh, who you are and who I am in you, in Jesus name. I thank you that I am made in the image and likeness of God. And because of this, I have the ability to do as you do. And I thank you, Father God, for receiving me into your kingdom. And if you prayed that prayer in Jesus name, amen. If you prayed it in Jesus name, then you are indeed a part of household of faith and you are indeed a seed of Abraham grafted in and everything we talked about in terms of the blessings um, of Abraham and the covenant that God gave him, you um, have the uh, ability to receive. And we just thank you for it in Jesus name. Thank you for, in, for joining me on the broadcast of Beyond the Shackles. And remember, by the blood of Jesus, all can be set free. And remember, I love you.